Well, grab a cup of tea because this one is going to be a very long one. Good morning, gentlemen. Divagant here on my 8th tutorial on Balvamer Editor. Today we are going to talk about triggers, which are basically switches. Think of them as your light switch of your room. When you press it on, it activates your light. When you press it again, it deactivates your light. It changes the status of the light from on to off. Imagine from 0 to 1 and then to 1 to 0 again. Well, um, on my opinion, there are three basic types of triggers. A single trigger, which is A, when A activates B. A multi-trigger, that when A activates B, then A resets and activates B again, then resets, then activates B again, and so on. And the sequencer, that is when A, B, then C, then B, then A, then F, up to 15. Uh, these are made with specific things. Almost everything can be used as a trigger, and almost anything can be used from a trigger. Well, let's start up with a single trigger. Our first example is going to be a beam, a light beam. This is an F beam, which is going to be our beam origin. And the beam will prolong to B, to info target. This is target is going to be info target is going to be the target of F beam. So the beam will go from the F beam origin to the info target origin, and the beam will go like this. Well, I've made a simple map for everything we are going to need. A room for each of the type of triggers I consider. And let's make our beam come from here to here. Let's grab our first entity, F beam. Okay, so the beam is going to start here and it's going to end here. So let's set an info target on where we want it to end. Info target. Here we go. Now we just have to configure if beam. It doesn't really matter because it isn't activated. The beam itself, the, the trigger, is going to be activated. Let's, let's start by the info target. Let's call it beam target. The beam uh, beam origin. It's the name of itself, and it's going to start on itself. And it's going to end on beam target. This is this is the starting entity, this is the ending entity. Under FX, normal, that is blah blah blah, let's make it blue. Infinite, not here. Life is the duration of the beam. This is not triggered, just leave it. Uh, I'm going to leave the rest because it really doesn't matter in about triggers. I'm going to set the flag start on because the beam isn't triggered at itself, it starts on. But I think you get the point. The target, the end target of the beam is info target up here, so the beam will go from here to here. The second example on single triggers is a button activated door. So this is wrong, this is funk door, sorry about this. So uh, trigger once, which is an area you set as trigger once, it becomes transparent and when you touch it, it activates the door. Here not breaks, but opens the door. My mistake here. So let's make that. I'm going to use a trigger, this is good for this kind of stuff. I'm going to set an area here. So basically when you step in here, you activate the door that will be in here. I'm going to create both the door and the area. I'm going to make it simple. I'm, I'm even going to leave it in here so you get the point. 
so this is going to be functor and this is going to be a trigger once you see, here you said you see a lot of triggers each one is a, is a different one we're going to use once for this one uh, and what we want is when we step this we activate the door so we're going to target this we're going to call the door uh, target door one two three in here target door one two three target no yeah, target door one two three target door one two three rest doesn't really matter delay before trigger this is for example if we set here 5 when we touch here it takes 5 seconds to activate the door but we really don't want it trigger once as the name says it only it is only activated once this is the door we will only function once from the trigger now let's set the door I'm going to turn it up so the door will basically not go from any side but up name is set the rest doesn't really matter speed I'm going to slow it down a bit uh, 50 not good no sound you can can't really hear it I'm going to set less one so it stays open uh, this is an interesting thing uh, the door when it locates if flip is zero the door uh, locates its uh, its own size this is for example the door is this size when it was located up it would do this if we set flip for example 16 it would do this plus 16 or so this it would move like this from the dotted to the line part don't really gonna change that. You got a lot of stuff you don't really need. Okay, single triggers here and then and the trigger ones that will activate the door. Next on the list we have a multi trigger badly spelled. This is A activates B, then resets, then it is possible to activate B again. We're going to to show you. I'm going to show you an example by a button activated light. This is. It's going to work exactly the same st same way your uh, room light works. I'm going to start here by having the button off, and when you press it, it turns the light. It changes the light status. This is its the light starts off. We're going to turn the light. On, so the trigger is the the button is on. Then after five seconds, it turns off by itself. This is you can use the button again, and when you can use the button again, you can change again the state of the lights from on to off, and so on. The multi trigger is a cyclic, normally a cyclic operation, which basically you can do A targets B all over again, how many times you want. Ok, let's make a button activated light and make the second room for that. Here I'm going to add a light just close to the wall so you can see. I'm not going to use a light spot or anything. I don't think it really matters a lot because you can notice. I'm just going to change it to red so you can see it clearly. And I'm going to change its name to let one to three. Okay, now let's choose some random texture for a button. Button to here. This is going to be our button. Let's set to entity. Type to entity. And we're going to use a funk button. Here we go. Which is going to target light one to three, which is that light over there. By the way, the light starts off initially there. Forgot about that. Again to the button. 
uh, around here doesn't really matter. This is an interesting option. If you set this, for example, 5, if you shoot it with a pistol, which causes 5 or more damage, it will activate. You don't need to go here and press it. Uh, delay before reset, this is one what we want. The button will take 5 seconds, so you can press it again. Uh, I'm going to... It is going to go from up and down to move up and down. This is you press it, you press the button, the button will do this, and after five seconds it returns to its original place. So you can see it's activated or not. So basically you come here, you turn the light on, the button does this, the light turns on. After five seconds the button goes down again and you can press it again and turn and change the light status. This is called, uh, I call this a multi-trigger. Okay, part 3. A sequencer. This is the then by, ch by using a very special entity called a multi-manager. Basically, when you trigger the multi-manager, it starts a flow of time, and at the moment 1 that you set, front breakable, in this case, goes on, at moment 2 another thing goes on, at moment 3 another thing goes on. Basically, we're going to make a trigger once, like in the, in the single trigger, which will activate the multi-manager, itself will be second 0, and then, for example, at second 3 a funk breakable goes off, at moment 6 a light goes on, and then and at the ninth second funk door goes on. Notice that you can make uh, multi-triggers using a multi-manager. This is, you can create a cyclic event with a multi-manager. You can, you can add the, the cycle here, for example the button cycle here, and each time you press the button, multi-manager goes off, and everything that goes off with the multi-manager goes off cyclically. Okay, I'm going out of... I'm going out of time. This is end of part one. See you in a bit.